Hi, welcome to the Brain Injury Answers Podcast. This is Dr. David Glazer providing the answers you need when a brain injury occurs. This podcast is for educational purposes only. For treatment, please consult your physician. This podcast does not represent the Department of Veterans Affairs. All right, let's get started. Question from Amy. Is it safe to take ginkgo biloba? Amy, this is a great question, and we will answer this question. But first, this is really looking at the idea of are supplements in general safe to take for a person who has had a brain injury? People who have had a brain injury look to everything and anything that might show support to help in their recovery. There are not many traditional medications that are truly shown to help improve memory or any other aspect of a symptom from a brain injury. People are looking to take anything to help them improve function in their daily life. Aside from time and prevention of other illnesses, there are still no great medications that can treat every symptom of a brain injury. Now we will look at ginkgo biloba. Ginkgo biloba is a tree that is native to China. It is anywhere from 66 to 115 feet tall. It was first used as a medicine in China in the late 15th century. It was thought to help improve cognitive function and help someone with attention. It was also thought that maybe it helps in reducing a high blood pressure or tinnitus, which is ringing in someone's ear. There is a large multi-site study done by the NIH, the National Institute of Health, that included over 3,000 people. It was performed between the year 2000 and 2008. It provided people a test called the Ginkgo Evaluation of Memory. Participants in this trial took 120 milligrams twice a day of ginkgo biloba. And the results showed that it truly was not effective for these patients. An other study known as a meta-analysis which compiles and looks at many studies on this matter and neatly packages it into one published paper was titled, Is Ginkgo Biloba a Cognitive Enhancer? A Meta-Analysis. This was published in the Journal of Human Psychopharmacology in 2012. And the results of this studied showed that ginkgo biloba had no positive effects on various targeted cognitive functions. So again, these are two large studies that do not show good proof for the use of using ginkgo biloba. Side effects that have been found from taking ginkgo biloba include nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and headaches. It has been also found to interact with a number of medications, such as blood thinners like warfarin and aspirin. For those patients that are on warfarin, you know that you often get your warfarin level checked quite frequently 
of anywhere from once a week to once a month. And you have to tightly control your diet because diet affects the warfarin level. So the answer to your question is, is ginkgo biloba safe? Well, from the study and the results and the data, on the outset, one should say, no, it's not safe. Stay away. But again, these are studies that have used certain populations of people, certain physiologies of people, and certain doses. It could be that the certain dose, the certain type of trial, just hasn't been done properly yet to see what exactly is required for the safe administration of ginkgo biloba. So if, and we know that patients with brain injuries are looking to anything to help with their recovery. So if one is considering ginkgo biloba or any other type of supplement, here are some things to keep in mind. First off, with supplements, the FDA does not have to review supplements for safety and effectiveness, unlike your prescription medications. Another thing to think about is make sure you talk to your doctor first. If you're on many other medications, or even if you're not, you will want to be monitored when you're taking good code biloba. Just because it's natural and it's a supplement does not mean it's not going to affect other parts of your body. And it just has to be administered, administered safely and you have to know there are side effects and you need to have the risk and benefits explained to you and know what you're getting yourself into by taking any sort of supplement. Another general idea I like to follow is that if a certain medication or procedure works great for a certain disease or symptom, then everybody would be taking it and it would really help. But at this time, many of these supplements are not used regularly because they don't have 100% proof of helping. But again, I'm not saying no. If you are interested in using a supplement, speak with your doctor. And when you use it, make sure you're being monitored closely and alert your doctor to any signs or symptoms that make you feel different from how you were before using it. That's a wrap for today. Remember to email all your questions to braininjuryanswers at gmail.com. Check out the website www.braininjuryanswers.com. Thanks for listening.